why is it that you don't know what you want sometimes especially if you're a high achiever and you've always had clear goals hi this is dr Minate tell me for another episode of wise wednesdays and i want to talk today about um sometimes becoming disconnected from your desires and what you can do to become reconnected to them and if you're a high achiever, a doer, or someone who is used to knowing what they want, it can be really confusing when you reach a period of your life when you it's not so clear what the next thing is, and you feel like you're confused, and you just don't have a sense of direction. I've had quite a few conversations recently about this. I don't know if it's a coincidence, or if it's because of everything that's happening in our world that can be quite overwhelming and confusing. But I think it's a good thing, because it's an opportunity to reset and recalibrate and refocus and reinvent and recreate what's often happening let's say if you're in your mid 30s mid 40s it can happen at any age really um, when you've always had a clear path that's suddenly unclear is that um, you may have gotten used to meeting external expectations or cultural expectations that you grew up with um, that told you this is the kind of job you need, this is the kind of life uh, that's good, and this is what you need to pursue. And because you're very competent, then you just follow the path and you get things done, and it feels great, you're rewarded, you're succeeding. But there may come a time in life when those goals, those, cult those expectations don't fit you anymore, they're not right for you anymore. And so it's time to step back and really go in and take time to figure out what you really want. And you may not be used to this. It may be, feel very um, strange, unfamiliar, or maybe even um, there might be some fear and anxiety attached to it. Um, but I want to share a little tool with you today that can help you reconnect to the desires within. This is what I call desire surfing. Because the truth is we always have desires. We're always functioning through desire impulses from the moment we wake up and we want to have breakfast or want to wash our face or go to the bathroom or um, put our clothes on. These are all impulse desires arising one after the other. Um, most people now have phones and we want to check our phones and we want to check the email and then we want to look at that video and then respond and all of this. These are all impulse desires arising one after the other all day long. So there's no human being who does not have desire impulses at any one moment. You have to be really uh, suppressed or burnt out to be completely disconnected. And that's because you have no energy. But even then, you still have some kind of desire impulse to move, to breathe, to drink water and so on. So this is the exercise. There are five steps. And basically, they're allowing you to disconnect uh, from your daily habitual short term impulse desires. So there's space for the deeper desires that are more subtle, quieter, harder to sense to come through. And these are the long-term desires that are hidden under the sea, the waves, the, the daily impulse, um, short-term desires. So step one, notice. So first is a mindfulness, a presence exercise. Just spend a day noticing all the desires as they come up. Whenever you move, whenever you reach out to get your phone, to get some food, notice the impulse within you. There's a sense, there's a, a, a tension that arises and then a movement that occurs. Notice that. Notice when it starts. Notice when it finishes. This is um, very refined mindfulness, but it's also quite simple because you can do it just as you go along your day. So that's step one, notice. Step two, declutter. Take some time to think of 20% of those desires that you don't want to follow anymore. It could be, you know, a very obvious ones like checking our phones. Most of us check our phones too often. Replying to messages, engaging in certain conversations. You kind of know that you don't need to spend as much time on those or you don't need to engage at all. So make a little mental list and commit to not following those basic, simple impulses that have you reach for the phone or spend too much time in a conversation. 
So that's declutter, step two. Step three, neutralize. If you don't follow one of those habitual desire impulses, you are going to feel some tension in your body. It's going to feel uncomfortable. Um, there's going to be like a sense of something missing a hole or some discomfort because you haven't followed that impulse. So that's where you use a relaxation technique, breathing, walking, stretching, doing something that helps that tension release. And um, this is kind of where the, this concept of desire surfing comes from, because there are waves. Think of these desires as waves. You're a kind of ocean and there are waves that are coming. So you're watching these waves coming of desire, the habitual ones, and you're letting them go. So you're not surfing or taking every wave and surfing every wave, right? So this comes to step four, which is capturing. Because as you create this space, by not following every wave of desire, um, you are going to notice deeper currents, deeper waves. You're going to have an idea about a project you actually want to follow, a job you want to apply for. Um, you're going to have maybe images, visions that come to you about what you want to do next. So these are the more subtle currents, the smaller or more subtle waves that you need to take your time to tune into by letting go of the other waves of desire. And finally, step five, repeat the process. Because every day your world, your energy, your attention is going to get caught up in those habitual, easy desires, the short-term dopamine hits um, that allow you to fulfill these sort of desire impulses um so it's important that you keep repeating this process and letting go of them remembering you don't have to follow every impulse and creating that space so that you can feel the deeper current of desire that's more refined that's more aligned with who you are now and that will take you to your long-term vision so I hope that makes sense. Uh, let me know if you have any questions uh, about this exercise and um, if you have any suggestions for any follow up on this that would be helpful to you, let me know. I wish you a wonderful week. Until next time. Bye bye.